So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm absolutely delighted to get to present this year's Women in Technology University grants on behalf of our CTO, Ivo Bolson, and Hugo Andrade, who was organizing this program. This is actually already the second year that we're running this effort, and we had many fantastic submissions again that you will see shortly in the presentation. But before we get to the fun part, let's start with a bit of background and, what we, uh, and a bit of background on what we try to achieve here. Then we'll hear from last year's grant recipients with little video updates, and I hope you will be as impressed as I am to what good use they put the funding to. And then we progress to the big stage and announce this year's grant recipients. So perhaps let me begin with a bit of personal background. My name is Michaela Blood, and I work as a fellow in Silinx, and I am with the company already over 15 years, and I've been working in technology for over 25 years by now. And while my career has been pretty smooth going most of the time, I did, of course, run into choppy waters at times too. So first of all, as a mother of four, I know all about the challenges of balancing family life and work. Let me just tell you an anecdote from just today. I got up at six, brought the kids to school, went to work. Best of husbands in the world is traveling today. And Ronan got vaccinated yesterday and didn't feel well in school. And of course, mid-morning, I get the phone call from school to pick up my son. And uh, it's all about, you know, figuring out how to do this. So it's a juggling act absolutely every day. And while Silings is an excellent place for women to work, I've, of course, experienced my fair share of gender bias and endured difficult situations, too. Overall, from my very own personal experience, from what I'm trying to say is that I think I have a pretty good idea of what it takes to support women in this field. And I'm really pleased with what I see happening inside Silings. So Silinx is a company that pays attention to this in a big way. As such, I'm delighted to say that Silinx has launched a program which is called DEI. It's now a few years in existence already, whereby the D stands for diversity. So the point is, I, I like Stephen Covey's words for this, strength lies in differences, not similarities, and fosters innovation. The E stands for equity and is all about promoting justice and fairness. It's making sure that everyone receives the same treatment for the same actions. And the I stands for inclusion. It is about being invited to contribute, to share your opinion, being valued for who we are. So everyone feeling welcome and having a voice is super important here. And when you put these three parts together, that's a culture that promotes of, uh, a sense of belonging. So, and as part of this DEI umbrella effort, Silings runs the Women in Technology or WIT program for short. Sorry, there's a lot of acronyms in this. So the mission of the Women in Technology program specifically is to advance the representation of women in technology. So not only improving the influx of women, but also the, the retention. Our vision includes to make Silings the best place to work, all I can say here, I'm for here for over 15 years, so that speaks volumes. Um, secondly, to ensure parity and that women's experiences and pay are equal to that of men. And finally, to advance women by applying extra effort to seek um, develop women. So the strategy to put this into pra um, to practice involves four aspects. The first aspect is about attracting and hiring more women and more specifically to ensure that there's always at least one woman candidate in the interview process. Secondly, we want to develop women, grow their leadership capabilities, and more specifically, this involves specific development and mentorship programs. For example, Silinx enabled and sponsored me in doing a part-time PhD. Third aspect is all about engaging, about fostering a community inside of Silinx, which involves local women's groups and activities. And finally, the fourth aspect is about investing. So this involves external commitment and support. And by the way, this is, of course, where the university grant program that we're talking about today fits in. So let me show you that this is not just corporate marketing and that this actually happens. So have a look at some of the highlights of this program. So firstly, we have organized all ladies hackathons. That's already running two years in a row. Here you can see a lovely picture of the last year's edition. And similarly, we had, we had this global adaptive computing challenge, which had, which had a specific 
women in technology award category, which really helped to encourage and increase female participation. These highlights that I have on this slide here show uh, that we're working really on all aspects of the program. So the Women in Technology program has also run the learning and development program in form of well, training programs, executive roundtables, and lunch and learns. We also run a mentorship program where all Silings Fellows and VPs make themselves available to support upcoming generations of engineers. And, and through that method, we can share the experiences and, and our expertise to the upcoming generations. So Silings also built a leadership program for women in a well-being program. You can imagine that was particularly appreciated throughout the pandemic. And also Silings puts a lot of effort into building and participating in global women's networks. For example, the PBWC in the US, the Women in Tech Festival and the CWIT in Ireland the launch of the Hyderabad Software Enterprise Association in India, as well as the launch of Society of Women Engineers in Singapore. And this is, by the way, where the university grants also fit in. It's a true highlight of this program. So now about the university grant program itself. So it was brought in, into existence last year with the specific mission to increase representation, participation, and entrepreneurial skills and abilities of women in technology-focused careers. Organizers of this program is a, um, are joint effort between CTO office and HR, and the grant has been and will be issued annually with the aim of giving three to five grants with about ten dollars to $50,000 per recipient. And you'll see in a moment that we went slightly over budget here already. So let's take a look back now at the 2020 grants. So there, these were the winners listed here on the slide. Six received the grant out of over 50 submissions um, from 11 countries. So it was truly international. We had lots from the US, but also from EMEA, from India, Brazil, Singapore, and Cameroon. Eight of them actually identified as Hispanic or minority serving institutions. And the final grants, went to the California State University in Los Angeles, the Colorado School of Mines, Santa Clara University, the University of Texas of San Antonio, Simon Fraser University in Canada, and AfriTech Hub in Cameroon. Let's hear now from some of them. And before we get to the videos, I also want to, you to bear in mind that all of this was actually pulled off despite a worldwide pandemic raging and many of us having to balance kids with work all within very small spaces. And I'm sure you, you can relate to, to these pictures that we have on the slide here. So first we're going to see a small video from AfriTech Hub in Cameroon. AfriTech Hub shows highlights of the summer hackathon and the recently completed Women in Tech Summit in Cameroon. The theme was leveraging female talent in the STEM fields and had over a hundred participants and speakers from all over Cameroon. It is a great example of helping women learn the skills they need to succeed in engineering by leveraging role models. Hello everyone. I am very excited to be presenting this project on behalf of my team. My name is Sabina Foba. I have a background in computer engineering, and I am the co-founder and president of Africa Hub, one of the initiatives that benefited from the Zillings Women in Tech grants that was um, given out last year, 2020. In this project, in this presentation, sorry, I'm going to be filling in on the activities that we carried out in the course of the year and week last year. Our proposal was made up of four main parts. We had a smart solar, solar greenhouse monitoring system using the SPGA technology. We had trainings and career development programs, as well as SPGA specialized curriculum to make up for the lack in knowledge gaps that we have for, for university students, especially in the country. Also, we had a women in tech summit. First, we started with a summer hackathon that was um, obviously very interesting. We had 35 enthusiastic participants, all women, who um, carried out projects using Python and um, FPGA technology, especially the PYNQ board, 
to build um, traffic control systems and other amazing projects. Here we have um, more intellectual more images from the program. Next, we had um, the Women in Tech Summit that was attended by over 100 women in tech across the country. It was an in-person event and um, we had representatives from almost all, uh, most of the leading sectors in the country and I did there say the word. We had speakers from Google, from the University of Maryland, from other um, telecommunications companies around the country and, for, and entrepreneurs from um, the city in which we hosted it, which, is, which was held where around Mount Cameron. During this event, we had conversations around women and tech and how we could average the skills of the tech skills, make women to be more um, active in the tech space. We also had very interesting panel conversations to talk about the opportunities and the challenges that um, are unfortunately um, impede women and girls from taking up STEM careers and STEM fields in um, Africa and around the world. We do not want to leave our participants without doing any hands-on um, workshops. So we had a program called Brand Up Yourself. Of brand up workshops to tell them how to make their LinkedIn profiles more outstanding in a session called Roxy LinkedIn Profile and how to build um, professional bios. We are currently working on a very, very, very interesting program the Smart Solar Greenhouse Monitoring System using um, Python, assembly language, FPGA, and I'm more than excited to report. Of the, the results from this really amazing um, project that we are planning. Overall, it's been an amazing experience. The Zilling Generosity has helped us with the impact of over 100 women, and we have to do more. So, thank you very much. On behalf of the team, I want to express my gratitude and thank you. The next video is from California State University in Los Angeles with the program called Be Winner. Cal State is a university for mostly Hispanic groups, particularly focusing on biomedical applications. Um, it teaches engineering and debugging skills to women and Hispanic students and shows them from the societal impact that they can have as engineers using vision, robotics, and mobile platforms. For example, they are showing a shower assist robot and COVID tracking apps. California State University, Los Angeles, Be Winners, is a program to create a winning experience for all involved. From our first and second year, mostly first generation, predominantly Hispanic engineers and computer science majors, to the senior level, near peer mentors leading the project teams, to the community, community college and high school partners, the bioengineering woman in innovators is designed to give aspiring engineers and computer scientists an opportunity to grow in their engineering and debugging skills, develop bounds with their future colleagues and coworkers, and build confidence in their abilities as blooming electrical engineers, computer engineers, and computer scientists. Faculty mentors from electrical engineering, computer engineering, and computer science selected and hired peer mentors who will guide B winners participants on inspiring bioengineering projects where students can see the societal impact they can make by becoming engineers and computer scientists. One project is a robotic shower assist device. The other is a mobile health app to track and visualize COVID-19 statistics. The faculty and peer mentors work together during the summer to plan and develop these projects for the upcoming academic year. Up to 30 B winners participants will be split into six teams of five students who will work with a peer mentor and faculty mentor on Friday afternoons to finish these projects. With our donation from the Xilinx University program, we were able to obtain paint boards where students could develop real-time computer vision and robotic arm control on the same board and chip. Students also participated in weekly team building activities 
such as Jackbox games and Ultimate Frisbee. Another focus area of the BeWinners program is mobile health. Mobile health means using mobile devices and their apps to provide health and wellness services. Specifically, our goal is to design a mobile health app to track and analyze COVID-19 statistics, such as daily cases and mortality, as well as vaccination progress throughout the world. Both robotics and mobile health projects will be led by peer mentors who are Cal State LA students themselves and have been trained as peer mentors to guide students through this project. At the end of the program, we will have a celebration event where BeWinner students will present their projects. Thank, Thank you, you Simon. Now let's hear from the effort in Colorado with the Silings Worth program. This program highlights women's opportunity to recreate technology and history by exploring computer engineering to redesign a computer-centered solution to a relevant problem. They are actually pink users. Hi, I'm Christine Lambie, research associate in the computer science department at Colorado School of Mines and program manager for the Xilinx Worth Scholarship Program. WORS stands for Women's Opportunity to Redesign Technology and History. In this program, we um, offered workshops where women could explore computer engineering using the Pinkboard and Python. And then women participated in um, about six weeks of projects. And then those projects um, culminated in a scholarship competition. And so three of the students um, won the scholarship competition and received uh, $2,500 each. So um, the program um, is originally designed to have students explore computer engineering and then um, design a women-centered technological solution with the pink board. So we um, had 21 undergraduate women participate in workshops um, that were offered in January and then again in May in 2021. Out of those 21, 11 were recruited to major or minor in computer engineering. As I said, three received scholarships and two will continue in the WORTH program um, in this following year as TAs. We had lots of faculty, um, a master's student and undergrad helped to create the original content for the workshops um, and industry reviewers also participated in evaluating the final projects. Um, so the timeline you know, started with three or four weeks of workshops that were each two hours in, in length. And then um, students had a bunch of time where they had support um, office hours to, to help with whatever innovations they were, they were um, engineering and exploring with the pink boards. So those are some examples of the workshop topics that we covered. And um, then at the end, we had a lovely presentation um, on Zoom with the industry evaluators um, who scored each project based on collaboration, innovation, technical application, realistic project progress, and professionalism. Um, so in the future, um, what we plan to do is to recruit heavily this fall. Um, normally, there's 600-ish students who take the introductory um, computer science courses and learn Python um, each semester. And so we anticipate that now that courses are back to in-person this fall, we'll be able to recruit heavily this fall and have a, a solid group of students um, for the spring, for the, for the workshops, the projects, and then the scholarship competition. Um, so please check out our WORTH website. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about how we um, develop the program. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Xilinx. And back to California, to Santa Clara University School of Engineering this time, the Frugal Innovation Hub engages faculty and students in humanitarian projects all over the world. They work on projects that have very real impact on society. 
given the social benefit of, of their work, this attracts many women to their projects. It's a great idea and truly inspirational. My name is Silvia Figueira, and I'm a professor of computer science and engineering at Santa Clara University, where I'm also the director of the Frugal Innovation Hub through which I lead projects related to social impact. The Frugal Innovation Hub is part of the School of Engineering, and our mission is to engage faculty and students in humanitarian projects. We do that through partnerships with local organizations that enable our students to work on real projects that will make a real impact. Over the years, we have had projects all over the world, and we are really thankful for Xilinx because their support actually uh, enable us to have more students working on more projects and, and basically create more impact. We are really glad to report that nowadays about half of the senior projects in the School of Engineering are basically for social benefit. And about half of the students working on these projects are women. And we are really excited about that. Hi, my name is Alan Baez and I'm the Director of Programs and Partnerships of the Frugal Innovation Club. Here are some examples of projects that Silence has enabled us to do worldwide. A group of mechanical engineer students traveled to Guatemala to work with Maya Peal on a water purification and transportation system for that community. We also traveled to Galapagos Islands and worked with the Chamber and the Minister of Tourism on a phone application to promote local tourism. A transdisciplinary group of students worked with a rural school program called LEAP in South Africa, developing a STEM curriculum based on their own hydroponic system. A group of civil engineers started a water catchment system for the Baturi Project Organization in Tanzania. And in Kenya, in partnership with Sabora's well organization, this year a group of civil engineers will be purifying the water from a well to provide kids of a local school with drinkable water. Now let's hear from students sharing their own projects. Hi, my name is Justin Ling and I worked on the Nicaragua weather application along with Alexa Grau, Greta Seitz, our advisor, Professor Angeline Serlian, and our partner organization, Hasdenic. Our application acts as a platform for leaders to share valuable weather indicators and announcements with members of the community in real time instead of on a weekly basis. I'm Brianna McGovern. I worked with Emma Alagrucci and Jen Lau in Project Advisor, Dr. Sylvia Figuera. Our project was located in rural Uganda with partner organization, Rose Academies. ULEARN is a mobile application and ad hoc wireless network system designed to share educational videos. Hi, my name is Alexa. Our team of six master's students are working with the Jesuit Refugee Services of Costa Rica. We're developing an application to share resources with those looking to seek refuge or emigrate to Costa Rica. On behalf of Santa Clara University, the Frugal Innovation Hub, and all our students, we would like to thank Silence for their support. We look forward to continuing our work together, empowering organizations worldwide. Thank you. And finally, we hear from our colleagues in Canada, from the Simon Fraser University's WWEST, which stands from West Coast Women in Engineering, Science and Technology, which inspires women to careers in engineering through a series of podcasts by role models. They also show open source apps promoting audio and image processing and machine learning to expose kids to what computer engineering do.
And finally, I'd like to show you what happened in Texas. The colleagues from the University of Texas at San Antonio run the project Lovelace, where the goal is to bridge the gender gap, in particular in the field of AI. They are working particularly with women and Hispanic students. Undergraduate research and AI DIY kits help students understand the central role of AI and how they can be part of this transformational time in history. AI education today does not mirror the rich diversity we have in our society. And if we look closer at the AI fields, unfortunately, we have only 5% of the AI workforce from women or minorities. If you look at these gaps that we have in these programs, these will often reflect in our workplace because these student cohorts are going to be recruited into the workplaces and those gaps are going to widen as we look at higher career paths in AI fields. Through this program, we are able to offer several activities to our students, particularly women and Hispanic students, to advance their career paths in AI. We have offered seven research fellowships for our undergraduate students to be placed in AI research labs, where they could actually work on a cutting edge AI research the other program that we are offering our students is AI DIY. Here, students are able to take AI kits that are available in the market and use that to solve different societal problems using vision, voice recognition, and different kinds of um, AI models that they're embedding in this hardware. And this summer, I got to work on the AI Y Vision Kit, which was funded by the Xilinx and Matrix Consortium. And being able to work on the vision kit allowed me to realize that I really enjoy working on hardware and that artificial intelligence can be implemented into our daily lives. It's not only a computer science thing. I mean, AI can be utilized everywhere. During this fellowship, I learned a lot about AI machine learning. We had lots of workshops that we did in order to, you know, practice our the, practice the skills that we learned in the workshops and also I got to work alongside Dr. Cutup, in which I got to use the skills that I learned through the AI workshops and apply it to our projects in the lab. We also have developed an activity called Tinkering with an AI Scientist, where the students would have an opportunity to work with top AI scientists in the field and build simple AI programs and see how it can help the society. So the goal of that class is really to get students know what AI is, what deep learning is. So I give a brief introduction about that and show them what, what AI, what deep learning really mean and how that can benefit their life and can benefit our life so that students know why it's important or why it's benefit for them to get a career um, related to this field. One of our goals with Project Lovelace is to build this connected community of students from multiple disciplines who are able to interact on a regular basis about AI technologies and also able to retain more underrepresented students in computing fields. I'm sure you agree with me, these efforts are truly inspiring. In particular, the, the level of commitment that we've seen here and what has been achieved is very impressive. So this was last year's edition. Now let's switch to 2021. So first of all, a massive thank you to all the submissions this year. We had submissions from all over the world again, and I personally reviewed actually all of them together with, with the rest of the comedy. And let me say, it was really hard to pick the winners this time. Having said this, there were a few that really stood out. And without too much further ado, let me reveal the lucky recipients. So congratulations to this year's recipients. 
We have this year seven recipients. You see, we're having a theme of overstepping the budget again. And we can tell we had a hard time selecting. Each were awarded again between ten and $50,000 plus Silings hardware donations. Um, some of those, you might recognize the names by now, were actually continuations of previous programs. So first of all, there is again Afritech in Cameroon. We were so impressed with the work they were doing last year so that we were delighted to fund them in an extension of the previous program. Same is true for California State University in Los Angeles, which is a university for underprivileged with their Be Winners program. Um, a new recipient is the New York Institute of Technology. And then there is Santa Clara University, also for the second time, looking to expand their humanitarian efforts, which we were really impressed with. We are funding for the first time the SRM Institute of Science and Technology in India, which not only specifically supports women in technology, but actually also works on important technology for women. More on that in a minute. And then we have the University of California in San Diego. And finally, the University of Texas. Let me give you a quick flavor of all the amazing work that these institutions are planning to do in order to help with the cause. We've asked them all to provide a one slide summary. They're pretty dense, um, but I'll give you the abbreviated form through them. So the first grant went, as mentioned before, to AfriTech Hub, a continuation of last year's program, where they aim to support 600 women this time through proposed projects and creating a special FPGA-based curriculum, which we are, of course, delighted to see, as well as coaching and mentoring programs. We also continue to fund the second part of Cal State LA's program, which focused on early engineering solutions, specifically for biomedical use cases. The New York Institute of Technology is a new recipient, like I mentioned before, with specific focus on recruiting from high school through hands-on activities, which give them the opportunity to firsthand experience engineering and gain confidence. And I think this is really important to start early to, to really plant the seeds in the girls' heads. And we decided to continue the funding for the Frugal Innovation Hub at Santa Clara University again. This award went to Dr. Malavici and her colleagues in India who are planning not only a program for women in technology, but this pro proposal will plan on actual technology which is relevant to all women. Namely, they're working on automated breast cancer diagnosis systems. The next recipient is Jennifer Chen from the University of California in San Diego. Her proposal shines in regards to the incredible spectrum of support that will be extended to aspiring women in technology. This includes workshops, field trips, and even high school outreach, which, as I said before, is in my mind super important. And the final recipient is Dirisha Kuritipudi and her colleagues from the University of Texas at San Antonio for the project Lovelace 2.0. So again, this is a second edition or continuation of a previously funded program. And you already heard about this one. So the goal here is in particular to bridge the gender gap in the field of AI. And with that, we're reaching already the end of the slot. So thanks so much to all the participants and thanks so much to all of you for attending and watching. So for more information, please check out this link at silings.com slash XUP. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>